Countdown to kickoff, heading out to Cleveland, Ohio with Tony Zarella of 19 Action News. Cleveland Browns football, 1-11 in their season opener since 1999, yet they have a star in Peyton Hillis. It seems to me when you have the kind of monster season he had, the expectations skyrocket the following year. What would be dubbed as a successful season for him? Well, first of all, I want to answer that, if you don't mind, in three quick ways. Uh, think of how sad that statistic is when you realize they get the uh, opener at home every year, their first game. I mean, it's been tough. Uh, the second thing is, with Hillis, I think it's a tremendous success if he makes it through the season healthy. And I and, you know the average span of running backs and the beating he took last year, and he definitely wore down as the season went on. And then, of course, the Madden cover and all this stuff, all the attention on him. I think fans, now of course, we want him to top 1,000 yards, but I think we need him to carry most of the load. So he's got to be healthy for them to have any shot at even having any uh, mediocre success. Do you believe in curses, Tony? I do not. Do you believe in the Madden cover curse? I absolutely not, and I um, there have been a couple of examples of guys who haven't been hurt. It actually even goes back farther than people. They, they usually only take it back to a certain date. I was in Denver when Terrell Davis got on the cover, then he blew out his knee in '98, so or '99. So, yeah, it's a little scary, but I, I don't know. I mean, what's the flip side of that? You, you know, Cleveland's never on the map. I, I think you, you know you go for it. Let's get to Colt McCoy. What are the expectations this year for him? You know, Pat Shermer said something interesting the other day, talking about how he he still looks at this is Colt's rookie year. And obviously Colt played half the games last year. Uh, they didn't want to play him. They had to. And he won a couple. He won a couple of big games. Um, but to answer your question, I think I think Colt has uh, – I think it's a growing year. I don't think he's – I don't think he's going to struggle. I think he's a definite upgrade over Brady Quinn and Derek Anderson. And the long, long list of guys who came before him – you know, I don't know if you know this, he's the 10th quarterback to start an opener for the Browns since they came back in 99. That's 13 years. It's That's unreal. absurd. It's unbelievable. So, um, yeah, I, I think Cole McCoy is perfect in this offense. I think he's a winner. Do I think he's going to go 12-4? and four? No. But I think he's going to look a lot better than the guys we've had in the past. What do you think of uh, Joshua Cribbs' hamstring? How's that coming along? I think he's good. I think Josh is good. I think it's, he's got two big challenges. Number one, the new rule about kickoffs. You know, when he signed his big deal that was incentive-laden, then they take the money right back out of his pocket by coming up with that rule. Um, although, if you watch that Packer game on Thursday night, you know that uh, some guys can take it back from 109 deep. So, oh, yeah. Um, you know, so maybe he will bring it out. I don't know. I think really his bigger challenge is running routes, and, and he's been the first to admit that, you know, you got to be really precise. And Josh Cripps has relied on athletic ability for so long, and what has held him back is his route running. And he says it's better, and we'll see, because it needs to be. The defense, one of the worst teams against the run last year. The starters on the defensive line, I took a look at this, they put together three sacks combined last year. Is this the area of concern with the run and the pass? Absolutely. They have ranked... They've never, since they've come back in 99, finished higher than 22nd against the run. And that's, you can't make this up. You know, most of those years, they've been between 28 and 32. You know, it's been abysmal. And obviously, you can't succeed like that. Now, they are changing to the 4-3 this year. And they did draft Phil Taylor with their first pick. And he's, you know, built in the, in the mode of Sean Rogers. And they have a Tyber Rubin. So they have two guys now. If you go back to those Ravens heydays, when they had those, the Syragooses up there, they got two guys like that that are going to help a lot in terms of taking up space and clogging the middle. So it can only get better. That has been absolutely the number one area of concern because they don't get to the quarterback. It seems like to me they are trying to get younger. Do you see that with this team? Absolutely. I mean, they're, especially on defense. Their defense was, you know, you know old, and, and the NFL is not old in life. But, yeah, they were all 30-plus. You know, Mangini brought a lot of guys uh, like David Bowens, those guys, over um, Eric Barton from the Jets. And I love the fact they're getting younger on defense. I love what they're doing on defense. I love the guys they brought in. I mean, last year there was a complete touchdown with Hayden and T.J. Ward. You know, so now you, you hope that Phil Taylor up front is just as successful and, you know, you start adding pieces here and there. And I love the plan that they have. 
You know, I've been in Cleveland for five years. I'm not from here, but I definitely know the pulse of the city. When I moved here, I could not believe the lightweights in the front office. And I, I've worked in five NFL cities, and I just could not believe the guys running the show here. And now with Holmgren here and Hecker, they've got some heavyweights, and they definitely have an aggressive plan, and I like what they're doing. Tony, be completely honest with me. You told me you've been there for some time now. Although you're not from there, you still cover the teams. What is it like covering sports in a city like Cleveland that is known to be not as successful as some of the other Midwest cities? Oh, absolutely. You can say it. I mean, you know, they have choked on every level in this city. I'm being um, I'm being nice here, Tony. I'm being nice. Yeah, I understand. That's and that's cool. It's um, it's funny. I I literally said to somebody yesterday. I forget what what came across my email on my phone. I read it and I said I'm living in sports hell. And I sports and hell. Sports hell. And it's only because there was something else that happened. There's always something. Um, but 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 on, on the flip side of that, it is a phenomenal place to be because the passion here runs so deep. Um, I'm not one of those sky is falling guys. You know, I'm really not. I mean, you know, even I'm from Boston, and even the year the Red Sox were gagging, the difference in Boston was everybody in Boston believed truly that next year was the year. Whereas here, they believe next year will be the year they really blow it. And I can't wait for that day to change, man. I, and it's got to change. I thought it would change when uh, LeBron was here. I, I absolutely think it will change under Holmgren. I really do. It has to change. I mean, and not to be too long-winded, but there's no one in their right mind that would have predicted the Arizona Cardinals would take the Steelers down to the final two minutes of the Super Bowl. Nobody, if you know the history of that franchise. Mm -hmm. And nobody, when people had bags on their heads down in New Orleans, would have ever predicted the Saints being where they are now and winning a Super Bowl. You know, and their, their two histories are far more torturous than the Cleveland Browns. Lastly for you, Tony, over, under, Six and a half wins for the Browns this year. What's your take on it? Over. How many are you thinking? Over. Nine. You're thinking nine wins for the Browns this year? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I think. I don't know absolutely. why that's my reaction, but it, but it is. I, I, that's fair. I think that's everybody's reaction. <laughs> I, but I think, I, I, you know, would, would it surprise me to see him go seven and nine? No. But do I think. I think they get a gift in week two, you know, with Peyton Manning. But I think, uh, but I, I think the schedule sets up that they can gain some confidence out of the gate. You know, the last five weeks are hellacious. They've got the Ravens and Steelers four times in five weeks, so they need to really get something uh, together before then, obviously. And I think they will. I think. I think. Listen, they they won a couple of huge games last year with an awful plan, <laughs> like with with. With a defense that was just blitzing everybody and an offense that had no plan. And they this role, the Patriots and the Saints, are they as good as those two teams? Of course not. But now they actually have legitimate um, coaches in there. You know, like I, so, you know, they're not going to make a Super Bowl run, but I could absolutely see them winning nine games.